Raven. Peace will set us free again. We are ready. concealed carry to do so in Wisconsin, you don't think the Joint Terrorism Task Force and the FBI and everybody else came directly at me to shut me up? Yeah, they did. Right out of here, orders came directly through River Madison. To the same people are being pacified, same things that, oh, lead poisoning through lead laterals aren't the issue, but you haven't even tested the water. So we have this imaginary thing going on, but the thing is, behind these corporations in this system are people. People you're related to, people people that you know voted for, just out of pure ignorance. 
So it's our responsibility out of love. It's our responsibility to get agitated because truly nothing happens until we get agitated. Nothing happens, period. As Martin Luther King also said, the biggest enemy to change, the biggest the enemy to change or the greatness is us being comfortable. So it wasn't easy to leave my family, come up here and be fasting all day and everything else, but I had to at least share a voice with you because now I'm still dealing with a son who's, he'll be six in August, but he's still operating maybe at a three-year-old level. And he's coming along and we're teaching him, we're detoxing him and we're working and stuff like that. We had all mother children, we were all tested at zero that level. And uh, trust me, he's not sitting chewing on chips. You know, not since we moved from one home to another where we previously had a, a water filter and stuff on our, on our water, you know, thankfully, unbeknownst to us, that actually helped them. But at our new house, we didn't have that, so we were drinking from the tap for a while. And he was the one most affected. But that doesn't say anything either about my grandmother-in-law suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's, who it also affects, who's been drinking tap water for years. So if we know the source of behind it, the motivation behind many of these evils is money. And I remember different verses coming up talking about the root of all evil. So there are things that we can do all along the ladder, no matter where you come from, your background, what have you, if we actually believe in this human right, if we believe that someone or something or some system is waging a war on us, then it's up to us to strategize to fight back and to win. Because ultimately, those who are righteous are gonna win. So with that, appreciate it. peace. Ramadan Mubarak, Bismillah, Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Bi Alameen. This is Ramadan. This is a celebration of one of the world's greatest religions. It's a celebration that I take part in. It's a celebration that I am proud to take part in. It's also the reason why I take part in this is because Ramadan gives me this feeling of strength, gives me this feeling of hope, gives me this feeling that the time has come during this time of fasting to begin using that energy that is being harnessed in me so that when after Ramadan is over, I have enough energy to start putting some people in jail in Milwaukee, hopefully. See, we got, we got issues in Milwaukee with our water. And it's been issues that are really going on around the state. They are issues that have been going on for decades. Our government has known that these lead laterals have been poisoning our community for many, many years. Those lead pipes in Milwaukee were installed starting in the 1870s. In Milwaukee, they banned the lead pipes in 1962. In the United States, they banned the use of lead pipes in 1986. So that tells you something there. That tells you that the government knew that this was a hazard and a danger to the health of the public. Yes. They knew that this needed to be addressed. And they knew that they had to do something, that's why they banned it. We are in the year 2018. Our organization started in 2015. Before 2015, how many of you have heard all these issues about lead pipes and lead laterals and lead leaching into your water? How many? How many knew that the corrosion control treatment that they say is supposed to stem and help reduce the leaching of lead is nothing but a bunch of crap? The leaching of lead happens no matter what. Corrosion control is just that. It's not corrosion stop. It's corrosion control. That means corrosion is still happening. That means flaking and particulate matter is still leaching into the water. And what government in this state, what government in the state, 
Walker's government has been telling us, take precautions, protect your family. That didn't come out of government. That came out of the grassroots. That came out of the grassroots. It's not coming out of government because government don't give a damn about us. Government don't care about what's going on with the health of our families. Government don't care about what's going on with our economic individual family needs. The only thing government cares about is what the Koch brothers care about. That's right. The only thing government cares about is what billionaires around the world care about. That's right. The government that was told and promised to us for the people, of the people, by the people, has become nothing more than a brokerage firm for the mega corporation. That's right. A brokerage firm that has not done one thing to elevate the poor, that has not done one thing to secure the future of our children, that is not doing one thing to ensure that our senior citizens in this country have health care and have longevity and live a healthy life. This government has forsaken us. Walker and his henchmen have forsaken us. In Milwaukee, the mayor and his hustlers have forsaken us. They have lied for the last five years, telling the nation they have a model-led program, a led program that should be looked at across the country as an example, as an example of what led programs should operate like. Now we find out how they were operating. <laughs> they were closing cases before our children were even healed. 90% of cases were closed before our children were healed. Somebody was falsifying some documents. Somebody was falsifying some billing invoices. Somebody got to get charged with fraud. Somebody got to go to jail for allowing Nazir's child to be poisoned. And the only way they're going to be held accountable is if we in the grassroots rise up. If we stand up and we say enough is enough and we take action. Taking action by going ahead and demanding open records requests of information like What's your protocol for testing water? Open records request like, what do you do when you run into a home that has high elevated blood levels? What are your policies and your standard procedures of how to handle lead in water? In Milwaukee, they had their head completely up the ass didn't have much going on there. We exposed a lot of that. In the last three years, we exposed, the Freshwater for Life Action Coalition exposed a lot of what you see in Milwaukee going on. And we did it with an iPhone and a laptop. We didn't do it with a big budget. We did it with our will, with our strength, with our courage, and with our commitment. Just like I see here right now, people with courage. People with courage is what's going to make the changes. People with commitment, will, is what's going to happen to this government when they come to the front doors and start banging these doors down and start holding these people accountable for forsaking the community. Lead is real. Lead is poisoning our families. It's destroying the lives of our children. We need to force government
to recognize that fact and not be nonchalant about the issue. They need to take this much more seriously. Walker needs to take this issue with our water much more seriously. Water is life. Water is life. Water is life. Water is life. We must protect our water. We must protect our water. Water is life. Water is life. Remove the pipes. Water is life. Water is life. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, so we are going to sing another song, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to go into the Capitol and uh, sign the petition and have our forum. So if everybody would like to clap. Hello? We're going to sing Everybody Has a Right to Live. Everybody has a right. Tiger Circle. We're here because we love people and we love this earth, so feel some people around you. It's all right to get close. It's all right to get close. My name is Reverend Jennifer Nordstrom. I'm the senior minister of the First Unitarian Society of Milwaukee, and my congregation believes that we're all connected that we're connected to each other and an interdependent web of all existence. We believe that it is love that is guiding us. And my sister here said it right. We are a dangerous people yes, we are. when we give ourselves over completely to love. Right. So I want you to feel right now. Feel why you showed up today. What is it that brought you here today? Feel your heart beating. Feel the person next to you. Feel the earth underneath you. Feel the hope. Breathe. Air against your skin. You are alive. Today you are fighting for life. You are fighting for life. Water is life and you are fighting 
for life. For people to try to live, to breathe clean air, to drink fresh water. You are the power of the earth and the power of the people. Feel it. Feel that power rising up through you now. Be not afraid. Be joyous. This is a celebration because we fight for life. We fight for life. to, uh, I'm Wendell Harris, I'm one of the tri-chairs of this Wisconsin coalition. I, I wanna, some people have asked questions about our friends who came across country to work with the Wisconsin delegation of the Poor People's Campaign for Moral Revival. Well, I'm here right now, I want to introduce you to them who actually helped Terry with the organizing of this action today. Where's Terry Wiggins? Our real yeah. superhero. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to introduce you to new members of our struggle for justice in Wisconsin. A group of a dozen nonviolent activists that reached out to me months ago. This is not a made up statement. We've been having conversations for at least two months more. And um, we, we would work together in Wisconsin during our campaign. They came in last week with us, they got ticketed, and they've been a part of this movement all along. We've been in spirit together, actually did some training. We invited this group to come this week to help design our direct action. They work with Terry, they're in this together, we're in this together from here on. Ethan Hughes and Dana McGuire, someone else I need to mention. I missed that one, but that's okay. Raise your hand if I missed you. So what I'm going to do now is give this mic back over to Terry Wiggins. She is going to lead her and our spiritual advisor, preacher. I need you to come on up here with, with our Unitarian uh, minister. And in song, that delegation is going to the governor's office. Latoya knows the, the drill. She's done it before. And we're going to leave our demands at the governor's office. And then we're going into the city. Thank you. And see you next week. All right, let's start singing. Water is our life, 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 water.
and do a public forum. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, I survived them. This, this. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I was, one of the last times I was in here, I spent some time in Dane County Jail. Did you? Yeah. yeah along, among 475 others, you know. So can you tell us about the time you, uh, were, you got arrested in the Capitol? Well, there was... We were singing. It you, was, you were arrested this, for singing in the Capitol? Well, I wasn't singing myself. I was gagged. You were what? I was gagged. Oh, you were gagged. Yeah, you were arrested I, for being gagged in the Capitol? Well, I think so, because they had arrested people for walking in circles. Oh, I some, see. Yeah, so, some, 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 some person told me that uh, I got arrested because I got involved in a police ball. I hear the Capitol Police are different than the regular Madison Police. Well, it's a different organization, yeah. yeah. So, 
Can you tell me why you're here with the Poor People's Campaign? Well, uh, I'm uh, part of Veterans for Peace. We are an international group that believes in all alternatives to war. And we recognize the, the connection between Dr. Martin Luther King's famous speech there, Beyond Vietnam, where he spoke about war and poverty being connected. And I have always believed that. Uh, we spend almost 70 cents on every dollar towards the military. Doesn't leave any room for any social issues until we get that sacred cow under control and stop spending all of this money on empire building. Can we do anything about the domestic issues in this country? We, one of the biggest contributors to pollution is the U.S. military. It is the biggest user of the fossil fuel industry for their tanks and their airplanes and their weapon systems and whatever. And if we can't get that under control... So what is your name? My name is Loss, L-A-R-S. And um, can you tell me how you specifically are impacted by pollution in the environment and the military? We're all affected by it. Can you tell me Not, how you are? Me personally? Yes. Yes, uh, I, uh, I have to think on that one. Rhode Island. Oh, yeah, Rhode Island. We lived down in, New in Newport, Rhode Island for 18 years. It used to be the home of the North Atlantic Fleet. And the island, the Quidnick Islands, about 17 miles long and about two and a half miles, seven miles wide, and the whole western side of that island had old, fossil, had old fuel tanks from our previous wars that were leaking into Narragansett Bay, okay? The, the shell fishing was affected, fishing was affected. I mean, when you have the military, it brings along issues of pollution to the neighborhood, to the environment, to to everybody. It, it affects everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being with the campaign. Well, thank you. Thank you. Writing out the demands. The demands from the Poor People's Campaign to the governor of our state for the rights to a clean environment. And the right to live. Check out the action.
the network that, that we're forming and we're building those of us who have been gathering to grow over the last couple of weeks, the, the, the sort of challenge that we're tackling, we see as having two main focuses of where we feel called to work. And, and that calling for us is focused on fighting the climate crisis, addressing the climate crisis, and reparations for white supremacy and institutional racism. And it's at the intersection of those that we want to work. And, and with those two focuses, we're supported by, by three pillars of kind of our approach. And that's the pillar of self-organizing, or, or an emerging kind of strategy. It's a pillar of finding vocation, or rather than approaching it from sort of the needs of an organization that says, how can we plug people in like pieces of a machine to, to our program, but rather like how can people find their truest calling and how can we shape our organization to help amplify that true calling of all the people who gather in this network. And, and the third pillar is what we call the power of fierce vulnerability, uh, uh, showing up, recognizing that that power structure we try to resist and stand in the way of and overthrow in places like this is built on a paradigm of security and a paradigm of violence. And, and that if we are going to resist that, we have, to, we have to stage the battle on the territory where we can have the strategic advantage, where our strength can shine through, can shine through. and that is exposing our vulnerability and, and tapping into that great, tremendous power of the empathy of people around us. Yes. And it's tapping into that that we find our truest power. Well, we recognize, we recognize that tackling these two interconnected crises of the climate crisis and racial injustice, that we are in somewhat of uncharted territory there. Nobody's ever solved a climate crisis before. Nobody's ever undone centuries and millennia of racial injustice before. So in some ways, we're experimenting as we go. And we end up sort of having to, to hold some space and see what unfolds and see where the next step on that path, as we put one foot in front of the other, we have to hold that space of the steps we've taken as that next step emerges in front of us. And so as we have that need to hold that space in uncertainty and in unprecedented times with an unprecedented rise of fascism in this country as we're facing our transgender crisis, we're holding the space of uncertainty. And and at times, it feels like all that we can do is shape that space that we're holding to fit our values, to fit the spirit of the world that we want to see, that spirit of fierce vulnerability, that spirit of interconnectedness. Uh, holding, holding that spirit and holding our ground in a place where we're not necessarily given permission to be there, not, not necessarily given permission to have a seat at the table in that way. So that practice of just holding space for us is critically important. So I'd love to hear from, from all of you who are gathered here. If anyone has a story to share about a time when you feel like you experienced that, of being a part of a group that held space in that way, where just in the way you and the people that were gathered there were holding space, seem to reframe the circumstances and open up the possibility. 